Hello, I'm Bill Say. Welcome. Uh, in this, I believe it's the second part. <laughs> it's the second part of this series on unfolding process and building community. I want to talk about a main way how we in the process work tradition um, differentiate um, process. And again, um, a process can be described as just a sequence of steps or sequence of perceptual events, for example, uh, taking a trip to, uh, you know, a city nearby, you can call that a process. Having a headache one afternoon is a process. Uh, building a friendship with someone is a process. Uh, in an organization, um, uh, starting to uh, formulate a strategic plan, um, that's, a, that's a process. Uh, having a really troubling um, uh, conflict uh, relationship problem with somebody is a process. You know, all these different things. And again, uh, one framework that I mentioned in the prior talk is uh, intentional and unintentional processes. And today I'm going to be talking about a related but somewhat different framework that's very can be very helpful for um, uh, working with and becoming more aware of uh, different kinds of processes that arise for individuals um, in relationships of all, of all kinds uh, in organizations and in community groups, etc. So. Uh, the differentiation uh, that uh, uh, we make in process work is uh, a process that's more relatively primary and one that is secondary. So uh, a primary process can be defined as one that for the individual or group um, is uh, somewhat held in awareness. Um, it's identified with, there's intention present to some degree, and often because of those reasons, there's also a sense of agency. So for example, uh, I'm a teacher, so this morning I taught a class. So teaching a class today was a primary process. I have identity uh, mixed up with it because I see myself as a teacher. Um, I was intending to teach the class. I had some awareness of doing so, and indeed it did give me a sense of agency um, uh, in, in conducting this class. Um, and um, for a group, for example, a primary process could be um, uh, Let's go go out in the woods and explore nature. You know, the group is you know clear about that, decides to do that, intends to do that. Maybe they're nature lovers, so they have some um, identity wrapped up with that, etc. Uh, many, many, so many different examples of primary process. But let me say a few things that are um, really important about primary processes. It's primary processes tend to um, go along with the identity, so that they can help bolster the sense of identity. Uh, they can go along with the uh, the intention, so they sometimes that they can be very functional. Let's say you have a work group um, that's working on a certain project and has the primary pro um, process of um, um, you know creating a little strategic plan about how to implement this this idea or this project. So that's a that's a primary process that can be very functional. Yeah, or let's say you have. Um, uh, a couple of people and they decide, oh, you know, we've been working so hard. Let's just take the day off today. And we'll go, we'll go have a little uh, picnic or something and just take it easy. So that's a primary process of just relaxing, for example. Okay. Many, many examples of primary processes. Um, now let me name and define what a secondary process is. Uh, secondary process is, it's pretty much the opposite. A secondary process is a process that's, um, either present or it's emerging for the individual or for the group. Uh, so uh, for example, um, and their uh, secondary processes are you know, quite the opposite. So they're not intended. They happen to some degree outside of awareness. They're not connected to the individual or group's identity. And then therefore it, it lacks um, uh, agency as well. So there's so many examples, again, like primary process, there's so many examples of secondary processes but let me just name a few. So um, uh, almost any ailment is a secondary process because um, very few individuals say, hmm, I think I want to plan to have a headache today. Yeah, that's that's what I want to do. Very few people, mostly uh, ailments and disease, uh, it registers as if they're happening to the person. Like, yeah, oh, I now I have a, a, a asthma. Oh, it's terrible, yeah. Naturally, they they... We feel like we don't identify with that. They happen to us. They're troubling. There's some degree outside of um, our own agency and intentions. Yeah. 
Uh, many, many relationship problems and conflicts um, are, are can be seen as secondary processes because um, for the most part, well, depending on the kind of person that we, we're speaking about or depending on who you are, uh, many of us don't plan on having relationship problems, for example, with the people that we uh, marry or the people are our business partners, et cetera, but they come up. And so oftentimes the problems are, they're not intentional, uh, they're not identified with, we're, we're, we're often um, lack awareness about the nature of the problem. Sometimes people have conflicts. It's actually very common to have problems in relationship and not really understand what's happening. I was like, I don't even know what's going on here. <laughs> I thought we were getting along, for example. Uh, let me think of some other secondary processes. Um, troubling kinds of um, things that are emerging. For example, let's say you have a a cooperatively structured organization that tries to be non-hierarchical, shares leadership and decision-making. But let's say they start to be troubled by a, a secondary process of something like it's an energy. Maybe it's for one person, but maybe it pops up with different people. It's like almost like a, a dictator, the, the, the behavior and energy of a dictator. And they, and they think to themselves, what's going on here? We, we, we thought we were a cooperative, yeah? So that's a secondary process. But let's say in this case, it's a cooperative that also sometimes um, struggles or suffers from being indecisive. Yeah, they get bogged down in decision-making processes, sometimes for months or even years at a time. And so here, it could be uh, seen that the, that the secondary process of the energy of the dictator may also be, may, may, may potentially be needed to be able to move beyond some of the stuckness and beyond some of this indecisiveness. Yeah, that's an example. So I'm going to make a generality here, two generalities actually. Uh, I'll repeat the first one. Primary processes um, often can go in support of the main identity. This is what we're about, and now we're going to do X. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's one main function of a primary process for the given identity, whether individual or collective, is it supports that identity. Yeah. Now we're going to go work on X, yeah, for example. Okay. Now here's a main uh, potential um, value of a secondary process. Secondary processes by their nature are happening kind of outside the box of identity and intention and quite often are associated with how the, the given person or group or relationship may be growing. Yeah. Let's say you have a couple, a married couple or intimate couple, and they're so used to being together, doing everything together. They're almost like they're joined at the hip. You know, they, they like to, they like to um, take walks together. Whenever the, the one goes shopping, they say, yes, let's go together and they do everything together. But let's say after a period of time, um, there's a secondary process that emerges that's a bit more separate. A little bit more disconnected, and then the the, the 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 couple itself is a bit troubled by this because we're so used to doing everything together. What is this kind of disconnected and separate feeling I start to have? It's like it's really troubling me. And again, it might be suggestive of how that couple is growing. Yes, it's great they've been together, 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 but maybe this process of feeling a little bit more disconnected maybe also suggesting that a little bit more separateness is the next step. Yeah. So many examples. Um, and some, um, hmm, I'm going to have to make a separate video. I can tell on this, but let me say it briefly. Some, some primary and secondary processes happen in a consensual reality. Like, yeah, we're going to make a business plan. We're going to make such and such decisions. We're going to take these steps. Uh, we're going to go take a walk. That's a that's a that's an action that most people could say. Oh yeah, that person is go take a walk, or this group is going to have a business meeting. That's a very consensus reality thing. Yeah, we're going to. That's a yeah. Most people say, oh yeah, they're going to meet together about their business, right? But not all primary, not all second, especially not all secondary processes happen in consensus reality. Yeah, secondary processes um, may sometimes be dreamlike, and so here I want to offer a little. Um, description of something that came up last night and then this morning. So in the night last night, I was dreaming. I dreamt of a crab. And I woke up in the morning and I thought, hmm, what is that crab about? 
I've never dreamt about it crap before. And I thought about it, thought it's somebody that something that has kind of um, sharp pincers and um, has a has a hard shell, like it has some armor. And then when I went about my morning, I noticed I was grouchy. And I usually am not grouchy in the morning. I may be down, I be anxious in the morning, but I'm usually not grouchy. But I felt distinctly grouchy in the morning. I thought, oh, is that my crab-like nature that the dream was suggesting? <laughs> and then a little later this morning, I noticed when I was teaching my class, I still felt grouchy. And furthermore, um, I had to clarify for some of my students an assignment that people were having questions about. And there was things about the, the, the description of the, of, the, of the assignment and the bounds of the assignment that I realized, oh, I actually need some of my crab-like energy to really have a boundary definition of what's what so that I don't have to deal with um, a bunch of unnecessary, in my mind, unnecessarily um, emails about this and that. So it, that I noticed, and I spoke about this crab in the dream explicitly, and I told him, boy, I am so grouchy right now. And a lot of the students, they were laughing because it was kind of new for them to have a professor talk about being grouchy rather than ha- feeling like they had to always be pleasant. And, and, and yet I felt like that, that energy helped me to really clarify, yes, when, when you do this assignment, you have to put this, this, and this at the top of the paper. These are the deadlines and, you know, the, the paper has to be connected to a certain uh, subject, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's an example where the secondary process was coming through a dream image of the, of the crab. Not everyone would agree that that crab in a dream meant, you know, being precise and boundaried and even a bit pointed. But for me, uh, that was exactly the dreamlike symbology or roughly, I mean, that was my best sense as I was interpreting it, but also as I felt it, because I realized, oh, oh, you see, I'm doing it here. I felt like I want to be really clear so that down the line, I'm not going to have to be sending 20 emails you know, to all these different people trying to re-explain what the parameters, what the boundaries of this assignment is, okay? A little example from my uh, teaching life. So anyway, um, let me say a little bit. Um, so again, primary processes can help support the main identity for individual or group. Secondary processes can often show where change is happening. But here's the catch. Because of the nature of identity, because our intentions might be directed in a certain way, because our awareness is held in a certain way, secondary processes often are at the margins of our awareness. We often find them a bit troubling, sometimes very troubling. And yet, if we can start to work with them and bring our awareness to them and skillfully um, uh, uh, adopt them or work with them, they can sometimes provide a solution that's hard to um, otherwise um, um, happen. Yeah. So that's it. So um, I'm going to be talking about a few more different uh, aspects about uh, process before I get to the subject of how to unfold process. But that's it for now. I hope that's helpful. Primary and secondary process. And I named, I named this topic roads more and less travel because for most of us, the, the road that we tend to travel is the primary process. Few of us travel the road of the secondary process, but the secondary process has so much potential for creativity, unusual solutions, and sometimes Taoistically implicated solutions. That is, secondary process is part of nature, and sometimes they are suggestive of how nature might have us uh, deal with a given situation. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Thanks for watching in. Okay, take good care. Bye-bye.